doing? <laughs> you know where you are, that's like <laughs> So much pressure this morning, I can't do it. What, what are you asking me? Hey, where, you know, any idea where Mark might be? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's only your husband, that's all. That's not on, come on. You know me, I don't turn anything on, it doesn't need to be on. I needed a lamp. But I don't always turn them on when I did, but when it doesn't. I need the room, but that's going to go on hold now. Well, do the first bit. As soon as you get a break, you go. I can, can't I? I don't know where he is. No, we'll give him a radio mark, it's there. So? In, his way, in the way of him. Are you, are you opening it before tea? I don't know, I'm coming in a bit. Sounds like that's on. Is that on? Nothing's on. It seems like it is. Because the residents are in this place. Part one, handheld.
Welcome to Mansfield Baptist Church this morning. It is uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, so we're here to celebrate uh, the, the, our risen Lord who is alive and living. And uh, uh, what an amazing celebration that is. But just like to welcome you as well because uh, we're going to be baptizing today. Uh, Kaya, uh, Blake and Michael and Vanessa uh, this morning. So a really big welcome. Come on, you can give them a clap, it's great, yeah. <coughs> uh, we are quite relaxed here, so please, you know, do feel free, if, you know, if the clap is all right in church. Smiling is even better, please do that, it's a celebration today, um, so please do that as well. Um, so, we just a warm welcome to uh, family and friends who've come to support uh, those guys as they're being baptised. Um, if you have brought younger children with you, today there is a, a children's group for younger children that will be, uh, we just go through the door at the back uh, in there and somebody will direct you to where the groups uh, will be for younger children as well. Um, I've got a couple of other notices. Paula, you're going to tell us about um, the All Together service next week. service next Sunday morning. Um, we start by, res oh, by serving refreshments at quarter past ten. Uh, so come and have a chat with everybody before we start. The ch church is set out a little bit different with tables so you can get to know people. The service starts at 10.45. But then after the service we have a lunch together in the hall. Um, it's a time to just get to know each other and to share with each other. Um, we're going to have a few tabletop games around as well so that you can have a little bit of maybe a little of a competition this time as well. Um, we'd love you to come and join us, um, but it really helps if you can sign up for the lunch um, so that Sue doesn't either panic we've not got enough food or have so much food left over that she has to give it away and freeze it for her. But if you can... On the table at the back where Claudia is, you'll see little slips that you could fill in and just pop them in the box at the side of her, just to tell us how many people are coming. Or you can sign up on the board like we normally do, or if you don't, can't make a decision today, please sign up in line, on, online. Uh, there'll be lots of food. Nigerian? There's going to be some Nigerian food. There's going to be food, some yeah. Nigerian food this time, which is very exciting. So uh, please come along and join us. There will be other food, so don't, if you're not that, you don't like that kind of food, that's fine. There will be lots of choice. Okay, so please come and join us next Sunday. 
Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Um, just uh, one, one more thing to say as well. Uh, we had a few um, of the young people and children who made the card. So we're just going to uh, present them. Um, are they here? So is Ker uh, Bethany here this morning? Yeah. Do you want to come up? Um, there's a beaner. I can't see. It's a beaner here. And Ayrton. Okay. Um, so, if camera, if you could just not include the children, if you can do that, that would be great for us. Okay. So, uh, which which one of these cards was yours? This one. Okay. So that's a very very sparkly bling one. That's a great one. Thank you. And uh, oh, that's really clever inside. It's got a cross that opens up. Uh, it says Bethany on there. That's brilliant. So we've just got a, a little prize for you. That's yours. Okay. Now then, Ayrton, I've been waiting for this. Which one was yours? That one. This one. Okay. So what? What's on this then? What? You've put something things on there. You've put a chicken, a little chick, um, and what's this bit here? That's the cross. So. Brilliant. So let's have a look, a look inside. Oh, it's got some writing in here. It says, To Mansfield Baptist Church from Ayrton. And Ayrton signed his own name as well. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, Paula, if Abina comes in later, will you just tell her to come? There's a prize up here for her. So let's give them a clap one more time. Thank you. Thanks. Mark has forgotten to mention for all the big people who haven't got allergies or dairy intolerance or anything like that it's a celebration today so they'll be at the back of the church for you to help yourselves with so welcome you everybody to this Easter service and children you know they're amazing aren't they yesterday you've all been given a flag sorry my nose is running now You've all been given a flag on your chairs. And when I was making those, my grandson was with me and he wanted to get involved. And the message of Easter, isn't it, is put loved. God is loved. But God is love. And we love God too. And that, I thought, out of the mouths of babes, you know, the message of Easter, God is love. He also did Happy Easter. And I don't know where the third, oh yeah. And then he did another flag that says... Everyone loves God. And I think that's pretty amazing for a, a six-year-old just helping me do these flags. So he wanted me to, to send that message to the church. He said, will you tell them tomorrow morning? Um, so there you go. And I've lost my phone. No, it's there. So I just want to read a verse out for you from Matthew 28, verse 6. He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. Just as he said... Just as he said, he is risen, I am risen. So can we have a hallelujah? Can we have an amen? Yes. And I think Katie's going to come and help me as well. Um, I don't know where your flags have gone, Katie. Oh, they're yours, aren't they? So in a moment, we're going to the, do the proclamation. I can't speak. Pro pro I can't say it. That's the word, yeah. We're going to do it, and you've all got your flags. So you've all got a word on there. And Mark is going to say, Christ is risen. You just raise, if you've got Christ, if you've got is, if you've got risen, raise them when the words come, okay? And then we all together are going to say, he is risen. So again, you raise the flags as the words have been spoken, and we'll speak those words out over this place over this town that Jesus is alive. Amen? Jesus is alive. And some of you will have a hallelujah. So we're going to do it three times like we should. Mark first. Raise your flags. Christ is risen. I think, I think we're going to do it four times. Oh. We're going to have a practice first. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Okay. Because <laughs> these two don't know what they're doing, sir. So oh, there we go, then. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll do the, the hallelujah. The, the practice indeed. one. Here we go. So... We've got indeed. So flags only if you've got the words Christ is risen, okay? 
No words. That's my part. Okay. You ready? So, Christ is risen. Okay. And then we all respond together. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay. Do you want another practice? Okay. Just as we have some guests, okay, who may not be familiar with these words and raising flags as well at the same time. So, um, so Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Right, this is for real. So we're going to stand up now. Okay. So friends here gathered at this church on Easter morning, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to sing our first uh, hymn, uh, traditional Easter hymn, um, about Jesus rising from the dead. So let's uh, stand as we sing together. Uh, sit down. Uh, so we come to the part of our service uh, for the baptisms. Um, so we're just going to watch a very, very short video uh, just to remind us uh, what, why we are ba being baptised and what baptism is all about. What exactly is baptism? Well, first let's talk about what baptism is not. Baptism isn't the same thing as being born again. It's not a way to get to heaven, and it doesn't make God love you any more than he already does. What exactly is baptism? Well, first let's talk about what baptism is not. Baptism isn't the same thing as being born again. 
It's not a way to get to heaven, and it doesn't make God love you any more than He already does. Baptism is simply a way to let everyone know that you've been born again and you've chosen to follow Jesus. It's pretty simple, too. You'll get in some water, and a pastor will say a few things. Then they'll dip you under and bring you right back up. That's all there is to it. Now, you might be thinking, I would love to tell everyone that I follow Jesus, but why do I go underwater? Wouldn't it be easier to tell people with, like, a megaphone or a giant tattoo on my face? Well, the water is really just a symbol of what happens when we're born again. Going under the water represents our old life being washed away. Coming up out of the water shows that we are starting a new life with Jesus. We do it this way because it's the way Jesus did it. The Bible tells us in Matthew 3.13 how Jesus himself was baptized just like this when he was here on the earth. And since we want to follow Jesus in everything we do, being baptized is an important step to take after we make Jesus our Lord. Think of it like a jersey. When someone is on a sports team, they wear a jersey so that everyone can see which team they're on. When we're born again, we become a part of God's team. But we shouldn't just stop there. Being baptized is like putting on the jersey so everyone can see that we love Jesus and we've chosen to follow him. So if you've been born again and you haven't been baptized yet, what are you waiting for? It's time to put on your jersey and show everyone whose team you're on. What exactly is baptism? Well, first, let's talk about what baptism is not. Team, they have so many things to do and so to work out, so they do such an amazing job. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, this, uh, the next part uh, as we move towards the water is that uh, people are going to just come and share uh, briefly about their story, so why they're being baptized uh, today. So the first person to come and uh, talk is uh, Blake. Oh, Ted's going to come and read it on Blake's behalf. Do you want to come up with him, Blake, so people can see who you are? Yeah, I just want to share what Blake has written down, and I'm going to share it for him. He says, I am the black sheep of the family as a teenager. I experienced with drink and drugs, as a lot of people do. I broke the mold and was come down hard upon, but my brother Craig got a couple of extra sausages on his plate, munchy, munchies. Got into a bit of trouble in my past, eventually ended up in prison, but that was for a good cause in prison. I had a lot of time to reflect and this is where I first went to church in my adult life. The communion was different to what I know now, but these little wafer biscuit things. Prison changed me over the last year. Me and Brandon found the church that has welcomed us both and drew us in. Both with friendship, family and love, we did a sponsored walk last year at Lady Bower Dam. We did cheat, but we made it. <laughs> pain makes you strong and I choose this path to create a life now not just to exist but to God with, but with God by my side H-T-I-D hardcore till I die, till I die. <laughs> it just, there, there is there is just one addition which Blake asked me to share with you, and that is this. He feels welcome and part of this place. Thank you, Blake. Um, so the next one just to come up and share is uh, Kaya. Yeah, 
there's a lot of people here. Push, uh, <laughs> push the mic up a little bit. Right, my name is Kaya. I started taking drugs really early, um, really young. And then as I got older, I started taking harder drugs and became an addict. I've tried so many times to get clean and have for a while, but always ended up back where I started. I never really believed in God at all, neither did my parents and wider family. I would laugh at believers as I thought they were mad. I then met Ted, Joyce, Mark, Sue, like, like, you know, there's too many names to name a few. Um, I started coming to church and asked God to come into my life and so many good things have happened since. I'm still at the beginning of my journey, but I know I'll get there with God on my side. There are so many people who have helped me in this church and I also feel very welcome here. No one's judged me. Um, I don't want to leave anyone out, so I'm not going to say names. I'm sure you know who you are. Who you are. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you to the church for making me feel welcome and everyone in it. Thank you. Uh, so, Michael, come and uh, share your, your story. You're all ready. Did you get ready last night? Yeah, I got ready last night. <laughs> okay. Love the shirt, by the way, yeah. He died for me, so I live for him. You don't think you need to say much more than that, do you? Well, no, I've got to... <laughs> I have got a few, few things to say. <laughs> Always have. Um, so I've, I've been through a lot growing up from losing most of my immediate family to self-destructing and following a dark path. My path, uh, yeah, dark path. My past, you could say, is very colourful, but not the good kind. Jump forward to just over a year ago when I was suffering with severe anxiety and depression alongside P PTSD. At church playgroup with, with Ayrton, it was something um, Vanessa did normally. Um, but on this occasion, I had to bring Ayrton. Something happened that day um, that sparked my interest in the church. Um, only I... Uh, only... I wrote, I wrote it. <laughs> Can't even read me I'm writing now. Um, so it's only one, ch ah, only one church before had made me feel welcome like this one. Um, I didn't feel judged. This was the um, beginning of my journey into Christianity. So finally, thank, thank you to everybody for being the welcoming family you are. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Vanessa. So, um, my gran's been a big part of me in becoming a Christian. Um, I grew up going to church at a young age, and she taught me about the Bible and guided me in prayer. God's always been a part of my life and has helped me overcome many of life's ups and downs, especially in the grieving process of losing my gran, who was a big part of my life and Christian journey. I grew up with my gran telling me the footprints in the sand poem, and this verse explains it all. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk beside me all the way. But I have noticed, during the most troublesome time in my life, there's only one set of footprints, and I don't understand why. The Lord replied, My precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During times of trial and suffering, it was that that I came, that I carried you. Thank you. Okay, so just going to invite Neil to come up. Neil. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Uh, so we're going to uh, do the baptisms now. So in the same order that you, you spoke is the order that you'll come up. If the person who's coming to read the Bible verse for you out, if they come to the lectern, then they can read that, that here. Or, or you can actually just use the handheld and then you can uh, address the people who are being baptized. Okay, so that's here. Um, I'll leave it switched on. Okay.
Okay, Blake, if you want to come and join us here at the front. <coughs> So Blake, um, we're going to ask you the questions that you, we've gone through with you in the book. Um, so you just need to affirm, uh, yes I will, or I do, those, those words. Okay. So Blake, oh sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to read a few verses of scripture for uh, Blake. And I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom... Every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you, Blake, with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And just a, a little bit to read off this piece of paper, and then I'll finish. May you always remember this day, and may God's joy, love, and peace through all your fill you through all your tomorrows, thinking of you on this occasion of your baptism and praying for God's blessing as you begin your new life in Christ. Being baptized means saying yes to saving grace, to love, to Jesus, and to say amen to that. Questions now. So, Blake, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Saviour? Do you turn from sin, renounce evil and intend to follow Christ? And will you live within the fellowship of God's family and will you serve Jesus Christ in the world? So Blake, uh, please do come into the water. So Blake, on profession of your faith, we baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we ask, come Holy Spirit, Fill Blake with your love, with your renewing of life. Lord, will you bring healing, restore hope, and build this man up into the man that you have created him to be. Pour that spirit on him now, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Kaya, uh, you've asked Joyce just to come and to read uh, a few things uh, for you. Kaya, God wants to say a word from you from Psalm 139. He made all the delicate inner parts of your body and knit you together in your mother's womb. He watched you as you was being formed, in the seclusion as you was woven together in the dark of the womb. He saw you before you was born. Yeah. So 
So Kaya, we're going to ask you uh, the questions um, that we've been through in the book with you. So, so Kaya, do you believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Saviour? Do you turn from sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? And will you uh, live within the fellowship of God's family? And will you serve Jesus Christ in the world? Kai, please enter the water. So Kaya, on profession of your faith, we baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our dear Lord, we just give thanks for Kaya, Lord. We give thanks for your blessings to her, the, the way that you've guided her in her life, Lord, and we look forward to so much that Kaya has to look forward to, Lord, in service to you and surrounded by your love and your peace. Please guide her in your ways, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we say, come, Holy Spirit, fill her with your life, with your love, with your strength. And I pray over her as well, Lord, a breaking of the chains to the past, Lord, that she may be free and free indeed. In your name. Amen. Amen. I'm forgiven because you were the Savior. I'm accepted. So, uh, Michael, uh, first, uh, Lionel's going to share um, a word of scripture for you. The scripture comes from the Messianic, the Messianic uh, community, the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. My friends, the blood of Jesus gives us courage to enter the most holy place by a new way that leads to life. And this way takes us through the curtain that is Christ himself. We have a great high priest who is in charge of God's house. So let's come near God with pure hearts and a confidence that comes from having faith. Let's keep our hearts pure and our consciousness, consciousness, consciousness free from evil and our bodies washed with clean water. We must hold tightly to the hope we say is ours. After all, we can trust the one who made the agreement with us. We should keep going, keep on encouraging each other to be thoughtful and to do helpful things. Some people have given up the habit of meeting for worship, but we must do that. We must not do that. We should keep on encouraging each other, especially since you know that the day of the Lord is, is coming, is getting closer. Amen. Amen. Jesus, when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, descended upon him. It was a symbol of God's empowerment of his ministry. So go and be empowered. Okay, Vanessa. Uh, Paul is going to share a uh, uh, word of scripture with you. Okay, this is from Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, 
your Saviour. So, Michael, first, uh, the question's for you. Michael, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Saviour? Do you turn from sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? And will you live within the fellowship of God's family, and will you serve Jesus Christ in the world? Okay. Vanessa, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Saviour? Do you turn from sin, renounce evil, and intend to follow Christ? And will you live within the fellowship of God's family and serve Jesus Christ in the world? So will you both come down into the pool? So Michael, on profession of your faith, we baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we ask, come Holy Spirit, pour and fill Michael with your new life. Lord, with your power for life, Lord, with your strength, and will you equip him with the gifts that he will need for the journey ahead? May he know the depth of your love and your presence dwelling in him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So Vanessa, on profession of your faith, we baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh dear Lord, we just pray for Vanessa, Lord. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come down on her, Lord, and to just empower her and guide her, Lord, and uh, to just fill her as she's been learning about you, Lord, and known from you from childhood, Lord. We just pray that this journey ahead, that uh, you will guide her and show her in your ways, and that she will serve you faithfully. In Jesus, we give thanks and praise. Amen. 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 And because you are the sacred. just going to pray for the children as they go out into the groups now so Lord Jesus we thank you for our children and young people of this church and the leaders we ask you to protect them and help them to have praise and fun this morning in your name Lord Jesus Amen, Amen. so what an amazing morning what an amazing God can we have hallelujahs and amens again Amen. He is risen. Amen. And we need to praise him, don't we? So are you going to get on your feet? On your feet. Stand up. Let's get on our feet. Even. And praise God.
Jesus, that we can stand here this morning and say those words. Thank you that you saved us. Can we just lift the name of Jesus high this morning? Lift his name in your hearts, in your minds, and thank him that he is a risen Lord. He's a risen Lord this morning. And we're just going to remind ourselves that Jesus Christ is our living hope, the only hope our hope. Imagine so great a mercy. 
Jesus, Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And praise the name of our great God this morning. Amen. He is risen from the tomb and has overcome death. Christ is risen. Today, we say with the Apostle Paul, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the miracle of abundant life here and the gift of life eternal in abundance with you in heaven. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Yes. Do you believe this? Yes. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. We proclaim it in our hearts. Christ is risen. We proclaim it with our voices. Christ is risen. We proclaim it into the heavens. Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Our prayers for the world are simple and powerful on this Resurrection Sunday. We simply pray that the power of the risen Lord will turn hearts around the world to himself, from violence and selfishness, to open new paths to peace and justice. Father, your will be done. And Father, on this resurrection day, we pray for those who have committed their lives to you through baptism. Fill them afresh each and every day with your Holy Spirit, giving supernatural power to walk obediently with you all their days. Grow their faith as they study your word. Establish them in this Christian community where they can be discipled into maturity. Give them courage to share their testimony with others to make your name known. May this public declaration of theirs be just the beginning of a life wholly devoted to you. Set their hearts ablaze with passion for the lost. Use them mightily in building your kingdom. On this resurrection day, as we celebrate and they commit their life to following you, grant them boldness and joy through the gift of your Holy Spirit. And I ask all of this in the powerful name of the resurrected Jesus, who modeled baptism in obedience to the Father and through whom we have new abundant life. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen from the tomb and has overcome death. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, reading verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women... Don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, he's risen, just as he said. 
Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen. Because it is an incredible day. Um, I picked that reading mainly because it's probably familiar to a lot of people, the Easter story, Jesus rises from the dead. Um, and with those words, uh, he is not here. He has risen from the dead. Um, I think if you don't know those words by now, I don't think you ever will. <laughs> the amount of times that we've said them today. Um, but I just want to ask you um, uh, this morning is what is really, really important about the, the, those words. What do they mean to us uh, when we think about it? Uh, maybe for some, that might be uh, an Easter egg uh, that comes. Who's had an abundance of Easter eggs today? You must, you can't be true, serious, guys. I went into Tesco yesterday to find some, and there was none left. Not one egg. Oh, there was one, but it was about this big. That was all they had. Um, so, yeah, Daniel's had a few, so that's great. Uh, who's got a day off tomorrow, bank holiday? Yes, come on, we've got a day off. What's not to love about that? Um, but what does this really mean for us? Because for a lot of us, it may be, well, certainly for our wider community, isn't it? It's a holiday, it's fun, and it's all of those good things that we like to enjoy about Easter. But really, it's just a religious story. It's just that kind of religious thing that we used to really believe in years ago, but... It doesn't really have any impact or any reference to a lot of life today. And I don't know whether you're in that category. I hope you're not because you're in the church today. So, But actually, those words, the resurrection of Jesus, is the central turning point of the whole of history. It's simply the greatest thing that has ever happened in the history of the world. Because it touches every aspect um, of our lives, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, let's be honest, isn't it? You know, we all will taste death. We all have been touched by it. We've been grieved by it. We've been deeply hurt by it as we've had to endure the pain of separation from loved ones. And yet Easter has a powerful message, um, even into those very darkest moments about what happens. We look across our world right now, or if you look across it at any given time, you see it ravaged by selfishness, by human stupidity, by greed, by just the, the needs necessarily that ends up with killing people and taking people's land and all of these other evils that we can see. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has something to speak uh, into that, that that takes place in our worlds. And what about our everyday life that we live nine till five, trudging along, Doing well, some people, not so others. What is life really all about? Somebody higher that's looking over us, that's coming alongside us in everyday life. Well, the resurrection of Jesus has something to say about that as well. And I just want to look at a couple of things with you this morning. And it comes from a reading, a guy called Paul. He prayed a prayer for those believers all those thousands of years ago. He said this. He said, I'm praying that the eyes of your uh, understanding will be enlightened or they will be open to see this thing um, that the resurrection is really all about. And he says that he wants them to see the hope of his calling. In other words, the hope that Jesus Christ... That when he came back to life, into reality, it's made a hope that there is life beyond death. Otherwise, we're just into myths and superstition and Philadelphia cheese 
eating people in the clouds kind of thing. That's our cultural myths about what heaven. But we have a hope of that calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? It just simply means um, that God is calling a people to himself. We've seen it here today. It's happening all over the world. Thousands upon thousands of people every day are following Jesus Christ. Not because they believe it in their head, because they've encountered him. They've experienced him for themselves. There's something that dramatically changes people to actually, I'm going to become a follower of Jesus. I would never have followed Jesus if it was just simply about believing a load of words that a preacher, a book, whatever it was, had told me, my parents. I would, well, I definitely wouldn't have believed it if it was my parents when I was 16, that's for sure. But it, I would not have believed it. It's the encounter with God himself through Jesus Christ that makes the difference. And that is anchored in the resurrection um, as well. But then he prays this, uh, these words. He says um, that he's praying that we would know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. That's the reality of it in your life, okay? That moves it from just a religious belief to a reality in your life. And he says this, he says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now, um, I'm not going to ask you to put your hands up, but if you're a believer in Christ today, let me tell you this. What this is saying is that the power at work in your life is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm like, whoa, wow. Wow. I mean, can you imagine if it was electricity in you, you would be, you would be lit up, wouldn't you? Like, so bright with that kind of power that raised Jesus from the dead. Um, but it also, listen to this, it says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Because it's not just the resurrection power. God created the world with his power. So the same power that created the whole of the world, the universe, the stars, everything is at work in your life. The same power. The same power that, uh, that, that when Moses called upon to part the Red Sea, if you know that story, that's the power that's at work in your life. It's the same, same, same power at, at all of it. But what it isn't, is your power, okay? It definitely is not your power. And um, I remember uh, growing up, um, most of you as you're growing up, you remember the very best things and the very worst, won't you? You, you do. And the, I've got a few memories. They're always good. Or There's nothing in the middle, though, of my, my early childhood. Nothing. But I've got this one incident. And what it was is uh, I was uh, about seven, I think. I was at school, and I was like the leader of the gang of the class. And um, all the people would gather around me um, at a break and we'd play bulldogs. So if you don't know what that is, it's probably an old thing. We used to run across the playground, one lot at one end, one lot at the end going, Aah! and nobody would touch anybody. And we would just cross over and that would be it. But gradually as the week went on, it got a little bit more rough. As we were going past, Aah! people were booting each other and the odd punch was coming out. And we were only seven, so th there was no harm done. But I remember one day, the opposite gang leader, he, 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 he said something, and all the people on my gang went to his gang, and I was left on my own. All by myself. <laughs> Feeling very vulnerable that now there are 35 children who are all on this other gang and all want to beat me up. <sighs> Have you ever had that feeling of fear? Well, anyway, the, the bell rang, and the first thing I do was leg it as quick as I could with 35 other children running after me. Ah! I thought, oh, I'm done for here. And I got down to the bottom of the drive and there at the bottom of the drive was my dad. <sighs> and I went up and I stood next to him. All right. <laughs> and they just all walked past. Nothing to see here. Why am I telling you this story? I'm trying to tell you this story, you see, because it's not your power. It's his power. 
When my dad was there, stood with me, it was not my power. I was weak. But just the presence of my father there, it diverted all of that away. And uh, I was saved for that day. I did get a few beatings later on in life, but I'll not go into those. My dad wasn't there. But, you know, that's the kind of God that we have. That's the power that this this uh, reference, this Bible uh, passage is talking about, that God wants us to know that when you believe in Jesus Christ, when you make him Lord, when you answer the questions like these guys have done today, that is the power of God that has come into you. Not yours, but his. And I just really quickly uh, want to just run through a few things about what this power is, because most of us, when we think about power, uh, we will think about um, uh, Superman. Who's got a favourite superhero in here? Shout me one or two out. Who's your favourite, Daniel? Spider-Man. Spider yeah, he's, he's powerful, isn't he? Yeah. Anybody else got a favourite one? Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah, I can see that line all while you model yourself on him. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Yeah, anybody else? Yes. Wonder Woman. Yeah, I'm glad we got the, the ladies in as well. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, yeah, I love your answer. Have you, that's always the right answer, isn't it? Thank you. But we model ourselves in our culture. We, we have this thing about superheroes who are going to do everything, isn't it? They never get anything wrong, and they always defeat everybody, don't they? But the power of God is different, okay? And the first thing about the power of God does, um, and the resurrection, why it's important, it, because it confirms, and I'm going to use a different word to that, it seals the forgiveness of our sins, Okay? And that is really important. Um, so when Jesus died upon the cross for our sin, and he's, he's there, he's dying for the sins of the whole world, and then uh, the, the wrath of God is put upon him so that we can be forgiven and we can have new life afresh. Okay? If he'd just gone in the grave and never came out again, then uh, in, later on in the Bible it said, if Christ is not risen from the dead... Your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. There's no forgiveness of sins. And that means that you have to carry around in your life all of the guilt piled upon pile upon pile of it for the whole of your life. You would still be guilty before God of all of your sins. And when you stood before him at judgment day, at the end, you are just stood there a sinner with no hope of salvation no hope of heaven no hope simply guilty but that's why the resurrection is so important it seals the work that Christ has done on the cross it seals it and guarantees it and not only that uh, Jesus then ascended into heaven and it said he's seated at the right hand of the father and he is making uh uh, representations to the Father for you and for I. So, and when we sin, we can be forgiven, continually forgiven when we come and say sorry to him. He is like, he, we call the word mediator. Holy God, sinful people, Christ in the middle, who enables us to relate to God the Father and to be forgiven of our sins, completely forgiven. Let me tell you, put it this way, it's like these guys today, the book cover has shut on the chapter of their life that has gone. All those chapters have gone. And the new chapter is now opened and being written. And not only that, I do believe as well that actually God goes back into those past chapters and in many instances will rewrite them, rewrite the words rewrite sometimes the sins that people have committed against you that affect you on a daily basis we know that childhood that things and as we're growing up and as we're getting older these things they impact our life and yet God will begin to move and heal even through those things yes you will have scars you will have scars but they will not dominate your life because Christ has come to give us new life. And uh, that power of God confirms and seals that forgiveness so we have new life. 
Uh, the next one is that it secures our future and we have the hope of the resurrection uh, of, from, from death. Um, most people, I guess, some of you in here may think, when you think about, you know, afterlife, what is it? Where are we going? What's it going to be like? What are we going to do? Well, the resurrection of Jesus shows us some very, very simple things, some true facts. One, that is life after death. Amen. Amen. Does anybody want to live after they die? Well, I do. Yes. Of course. But it's not the sitting in the kind of furry clouds and all of those kind of things. Jesus was physically resurrected. Um, it says in the Bible that, you know, when, when he comes again, the second coming, we're going to be like him. We're going to have a new body. It's a physical body, a spiritual body, but it's, you can touch it. it, it Jesus ate after the resurrection. They touched him. He was real. It wasn't just this spirit kind of thing. And we will be resurrected. We have this secure hope. That's what he brings because Jesus died. When I was uh, teaching in schools, um, a, a teenager asked me the really awkward question. He says, how do you know that you're going to live after you die? I thought, oh, that's a good question, isn't it? Thank you very much for that. And then God gave me the answer. He says, because Jesus was raised to life, the first of what was to come. Um, so, because in Adam it says, uh, we all die, even so, Christ all shall be made alive. When we're in him, when we've received him as our Lord and Saviour, he makes us alive. Uh, the last one, and um, one that, you know, really we should all be uh, really concerned about, is to provide power for the living of the abundant Christian life. Because life deals you a set of cards doesn't it yeah. has everybody got good cards in theirs no. i don't think so we will all have challenges we will all have things uh, that will uh, work against our faith that will work against our life it's the natural course of life for everybody all of us will experience challenge and if for a christian uh, life can even be harder sometimes because you're trying to live in a different way to everybody else. And Jesus said, you know, that the narrow road, the narrow gate that you go through to eternal life is on a narrow path. And it's like a winding path. It goes up. It can be, you have to persevere with it. Where are we going to get the strength as weak human beings to be able to maintain that life well let me tell you it's the power of God at work but that doesn't mean to say that you'll be like Superman or some kind of superhero because we're told aren't we uh, by Paul he said my that God says my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in your weakness the weaker you are the stronger I am and therefore we can be confident that when Jesus is in our life, he will never leave you. He will never let you down. You can be bold and say, he is my helper. And I want to ask you a question. Do you dare to believe this morning that God's power will be made known in your life? And do you dare to believe that it's sufficient to overcome opposition that you may face? Is it sufficient to break the hold of the old sinful habits that you may have in your life? Is it sufficient to be delivered from temptation? Is it possible to overcome temptation? Yeah. And even is it sufficient, God's power at work in your weakness to help you rise above the obstacles of life or go through them that we all encounter in our environment and in our circumstances? Is his power sufficient? Yes, if you can say, yes, it is, well, know this. There are no superheroes that walk the way of Christ. There are humble people who will follow him, whatever the cost. But he promises that he will be with you in all circumstances. It's a tough call. 
sometimes to live that out. But God has said he will be with you. One of the uh, crazy rock stars of our past generations, Alice Cooper. Oh, I'm testing your age now. Have you heard of Alice Cooper? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, some of you younger ones may have heard of him if your parents knew him. You might have heard him. Um, back in that time, uh, it was fashionable to be... If you were a rock, you had to paint your face some awful colour. Uh, you had to be the baddest person that ever. And they would go on the tours, wouldn't they? They would stay in the hotel rooms... And he actually said this because Alice Cooper was a wild, wild man and he was converted. He became a Christian. He became a follower of Jesus. And this is what he said about it. He said, drinking beer is easy. He said, trash in your hotel room after a gig is easy. But he said, being a Christian, he said, now that's a tough call. He said, that is being a true rebel going against the flow and following after Christ. But I want you to remember these words as I just uh, finish uh, this morning. It's that there is no giant in front of you. It's never bigger than God who is on your side. I'm going to say those words again because I want you to go away with those Because I want you to know, my prayer for you today is that you would know Christ in you. I want you to know that because I want you to know the power of the forgiveness of sins in your life. And God rewriting your history and writing your present. I want you to know that he's written in the future of heaven and he's given you an invitation to come. I want you to know that this morning. But I want you to know as well, for whatever you're going through, whatever the journey leads you to in, wherever you are, even this morning, that when you have that power of Christ that you receive through your repentance, which is turning away from sin and following Christ wholeheartedly, the giant in front of you is never bigger than God who is on your side. And the image I gave you at the beginning of my dad when I was in deep, deep trouble as a seven-year-old. I want you to just close your eyes for a second. But don't put my dad there. Put the heavenly father there who loves you so deeply who longs for you to come to him, to draw near and to know his power and his presence, his forgiveness, his new life, his hope, the security and certainty in an uncertain world that he'll never leave you and that you will know that great hope that goes beyond even life itself through death and into eternity where he's going to recreate everything anew and afresh and when you receive Christ you will be in him and with him that is our heavenly father that's his will and his purpose for you I'm going to ask uh, the musicians to come up again. But just hold that moment as they sing some words which are the key that opens the door to eternal life. And that is Christ at the cross. Yeah.
uh, just as we were hearing those beautiful words there's just uh, two pictures that came to my mind through the Holy Spirit the first one was of the heart and Jesus is knocking on hearts and he says that anyone that will come to him he will by no means cast them out and he just wants to come in to wash you free of guilt to forgive all of your sins and to put you right with himself you just need to open the door the handle is on the inside he is a mighty God but he is a gentle loving wonderful saviour The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, don't reject him. And just the other picture was a hand on a shoulder. And the Lord knows the suffering, the trial and the testing. And the obstacles and the difficulty. But he simply puts his hand upon your shoulder so you know he is with you. So Father, as we, we come, Lord, to the end of this time together, Lord, will your Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us as we leave this place. Lord, may you carry your presence into this week. Lord, may we not just go back from this mountain top to the place where we have come without being changed. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand. Uh, we're going to uh, bring our service to a close uh, by singing another traditional Easter hymn. Um, and, uh, but as we do that, we're going to take up an, an offering. So if you're just visiting us today as a church, don't feel uh, any obligation at all to give. It's just something we do as a church um, every week. Um, so we're, we will do that. Please do stay for tea and coffee. And uh, if, come and uh, talk to the guys who've been baptised as well today. Uh, that would be great.
for all of your good gifts towards us. Lord, of your own, do we give you back. And Father, we commit these to you to use them for your kingdom, for your purposes, and for your glory. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and the light of his countenance be upon you and be with you now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you in all of your ways during this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you.